pressed down. Just give me five minutes. Just go for walk. It used to be called consumption in days long past. A disease that wasted away human bodies until the souls finally fled out of desperation. But that was before the dawn of the new age, when people asked, what chance does bacteria have against modern medicine? <laughs> so don't let this end you into a state of panic. The doctors are here and so is Men's HQ. Now I'm going to throw some staggering numbers at you. You guys know 2 billion people across the world carry around the bacterium that causes tuberculosis in their fragile innards. That's almost the combined population of the two most populated countries in the world, China and India. We're talking about a full one-third of the human equation. One in ten of those people are going to have the docile infection develop into the active state of tuberculosis. Sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? And quite a few of those cases, it can be deadly serious. But before we get into scare mode, let's take a look at what TB actually is. Doc, give us a lowdown of the bug. Tuberculosis is actually a bacterial infection which is rampant all over the country and all over the world in fact I would say. So it's a bacterial infection like any other infection. Uh, it can affect the lungs, it can affect the uh, abdomen, in fact it can affect any part of the body from the head till the toe. The only problem and the only difference of tuberculosis as compared to other bacterial infections is that the infections tend to be deep-seated. The bacteria tends to be deep-seated. It goes inside to the deep pores, to the lungs or other areas. Because of that, you really have to give medicines for longer than a week or two, which we generally give antibiotics for normal cases. You have to give antibiotics for a longer period of time so that you can take out and get those persisters or those deep-seated infections out of the holes and cure the patient once and for all. That is the only main difference between tuberculosis and other bacterial infections, but it is like any other bacterial infection. Another difference for tuberculosis which I would say is that, that uh, people have, the doctors over a period of time have kept drugs which are specifically meant only for tuberculosis. They can be used for other infections as well, but since they, we don't have too many drugs to go around with, so specific drugs are only for tuberculosis so that they can be treated very well uh, and, and, and the patient can be cured completely of tuberculosis once it's been diagnosed. And now I think TB can be divided into active TB and latent TB, but Doc, what is the difference? You know, when a person gets infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis, what happens is the body reacts to that in the form of inflammation. And most of the time when a person gets infection for the first time, the body is able to eradicate. But some form of these bacteria are preserved in the body in the, in the dormant phase. And now this is sort of a latent tuberculosis. Now when this person immune status goes down because of various, re various reasons, now this person can develop active pulmonary tuberculosis. And uh, there are different kind of name given, primary pulmonary tuberculosis and secondary pulmonary tuberculosis. Primary pulmonary tuberculosis is when a person gets infection for the first time and it converts into a disease and symptoms. You call it a primary pulmonary tuberculosis. But if a person gets infection who's already been infected from the bacteria which are present in his body, you call it a secondary pulmonary tuberculosis. There you have it. Now let's take a peek into the warning signs of TB. What are the symptoms one should look out for, Doc? Any patient who's got fever, cough, blood in the sputum or chest pain which is lasting for more than three weeks that's a patient for the diagnosis of tuberculosis that's a patient who should be subjected for the diagnosis of tuberculosis Get on doc now if you think you have some of these please get in touch with your doctor and have yourself checked out well we have someone here who did pay heed to the symptoms let's find out how it was for him tell us dude uh, the first some symptoms were loss of appetite and uh, constant fevers that I got in the morning as well as in the evening. Then uh, we took uh, normal uh, prescription medicines for that, uh, but it again it happened regularly. Then uh, we were alarmed by the sudden weight loss in about one one and a half months. I lost about 17 kgs. 